anyone who hasn't listened so far, the key is that there are unfortunately many people that uh, go to yeshivot and they don't learn about Yirat Shemaim. They learn about insulting people instead. So they make fun of people that learn from Archkol, the publisher, because Archkol provides you commentary and it makes it a little easier to read the Gemara and uh, understand it. But not understand all the secrets and everyone that learns the art scores are going to become a Kabbalist. Understand basic level. So people are saying, no, no, you should learn the tougher way and do this and do that. So, as I always told you guys, the Hashem is so perfect that He provides the cure before you ever knew that you could even be sick. Now, 11 years ago, 11 years ago, my Rav, Rav Ephraim, wrote an answer about this specific thing and published it in all the yeshivot in Eretz Yisrael. 11 years ago, this is, he was uh, 17 years old. All the yeshivot accepted this answer, not one rabbi went against him. Send it to yeshivot, didn't send it to a few friends. Send the answer to all the yeshivot, giant yeshivot, Rav Ovadia, everyone accepted this answer. No one said one thing about it. He wrote this answer and he published it later on when he published one of his many books. Ech Tov Li Yisrael. Ech Tov Li Yisrael. How good is it? Israel. It's a pasuk in, in the Torah. And here, I think you have Chedek 1. Chedek Aleph. I give it to... Uh, okay, so this is good to read. So in Perek Aleph, he has about 11 dapim. 11 dapim about this specific issue. It says, Lefum Chupa Shibashta. He calls this, uh, this Siman Yud Aleph in Echtov Yisrael, and he goes into the details. I'm not going to go into all the details. He says the people that spend too much time going and trying to do pilpulim, which is like looking into the details of the details of the details of the details, not for to know what the halacha is, not to know what the secret is, but for the purpose of mental stimulation, which is good. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But he says here that the major Chachamim have said that to some extent, if, if they're not corrected these people, then they end up doing so much digging that they end up learning nothing. And whatever they learn is wrong anyway. One of them happens to be in this specific situation when these people go and they actually start making fun of anyone that's learning in a different shita. He says, Shmua Shamati, I heard. You know, that's what you know people say, I heard. They don't they don't say, Oh yeah, for sure there's a shame in the world. Say, I heard distant hearing that there are some people that dare not only say that their way is the only way, the best way, but they make fun of any other way of learning. This is in essence the same exact thing of what's happening with people from Yeshivot. That say anyone that's learning in a different way is wrong, art scroll or any other way. He says, I heard such a thing. He says, he says a bunch of things about it. And I'll read you a few uh, things. He goes, first and foremost, these people need to understand that someone that speaks such things, they create a lot of anguish in Shemaim, and that anguish in Shemaim eventually leads to suffering here. For who? For them. Because they're not keeping their mouth. Someone that keeps their mouth clean, keeps their body away from tzarot, away from, from, from suffering. And he gives you all types of verses. He says, ultimately, the biggest thing of what's happening here is that these people are poslim. They're canceling people out. But it already says in the, in the, in the Gemara, a posel be'acherim b'mumo posel. He, he himself becomes pasul. He himself, himself becomes not kosher by going making fun of other people. Why is why such a big thing? He goes, because, because these other ways of studying is good for them. It's still Torah. They're still getting to the basic understanding. They're still getting to know what's going on. They're still learning Torah for Torah. They're not learning Torah for uh, any other reason. Leave Torah. So what you're doing is that you're discouraging somebody from learning Torah. You are causing not only Chilul Hashem, but you're causing Bitul Torah. Bitul Torah. 
In the Gemara, it says someone at the Bitu Torah it brings death penalty to the world. Not just for him, for people. It creates war in a nation. And he says a lot of other things, but one of the best things that I found out from other friend is that the answer to all of this doesn't even need to be in my book. It's actually in the Gemara. It's in the Gemara. Gemara Masechet Shabbat, page 63. Page 63a answers anyone that goes against a different shita of learning. Some people say, listen, you know, you should learn the Gemara the way it's written and not learn it in art school because art school gives you a, uh, a English translation. You should learn the Gemara in its language, which is a combination of Hebrew and Aramaic. This couldn't be further from the truth. Why? Because the only thing that you're supposed to learn in its language, if it's possible, is the written Torah. Why? Because the written Torah has secrets within the language itself, which we'll learn shortly. The actual learn the actual Gemara itself is for the purpose of the Gemara is to learn what it means. Not the letters, not how it's written. Bottom line, pshat. What is Hashem saying here? What are the Chachamim saying here? What is the Alakha? What's happening here? Not why is it written with this letter? Why is it written with that letter? Why is this sentence? No, no, no. This has nothing to do with the oral Torah. Nothing to do with it. That's the Rin Torah you're talking about. The Gemara, you learn it in a language you understand. Which, by the way, is the reason why somebody like myself, it's very sad to say, sometimes I have people that come to me, they've been learning in yeshiva for 25 years, they come for one shiul, they say, listen, how do you know all of it? You've only been studying for a few years. I learned yeshiva 25 years, I don't know 5%. I said, it has nothing to do with me, it's all Hashem. He goes, yeah, but still, the Gemara that you read, I read it a hundred times, I didn't understand anything. I said, what language are you read it in? He said, I learned it in uh, whatever it says. I said, do you understand Aramaic? Do you understand uh, Hebrew? He goes, yeah, you know, I have a this, I have a that. I'm like, yeah, but do you understand like you understand English? He goes, oh, I understand. I'm like, let me ask you a question. When you dream, you go to sleep. You go to sleep. What language do you dream in? <laughs> what language do you, Bimit, what language do you dream in? That's how you know, by the way, what's your first language. What language do you dream in? Every time, not just once in a blue moon. Every time, what language do you dream in? When you talk to somebody, you're talking to the fish, you're talking to the zoo animal of some other kind, whatever, some ghost you're talking to, whoever you're talking to in your crazy dream, what language are you speaking? He says, I speak English. I said, so you have to read in English, my friend. Yes, it's good to learn the other languages. But not if you don't understand it. If you understand the Aramaic, just like you understand English, Shrecha. Do it. But if you don't understand, if you read a whole Daf Gemara, you are a whole Masech, you don't understand what's going on, you waste your time. Give me a source. Here's a source. Gemara Masech Shabbat. Gemara Masech Shabbat, page 63. says, Rav Ka'ana. Amar Rav Ka'ana. Rav Ka'ana said, When I was 18 years old, eight years of age, I learned the entire Talmud. He learned the entire Gemara already by the time he was 18 years old. Which means much more than us learning Gemara at any age, because for them to learn in Taigma means he already knew it completely. And he says, but I never knew that a verse ever departs from the pshat, from the plain meaning. Until now, until I learned it from uh, uh, Rabbi Lazal. Now that I learn it, but until now, I never knew that there was something beyond the pshat. I never knew. I thought that whatever it says, that's what you learn. There's no like secrets. There's no exegesis and, and you know figuring things out. There's secrets, chidushim. He says, I learned the basics. What's the chidush here? So what is Rav? Why is this written in the Gemara that he didn't know this for so many years, for two years, for ten years, for twenty years? What's the big deal? Why is this written in the Gemara? This is written in the Gemara for a reason. The Gemara says, why is this written in the Gemara? What lesson are we learning from here? We're learning from Rav Ka'ana. He's trying to teach us that first, a person must learn the basic pshat for what it means. Then after he knows these and he's comfortable with the entire pshat, only then can he even consider reasoning and pilpulim and digging in and going for this and going for that and going for the secret and trying to figure... No, no, no. First understand the entire Gemara as it is. Basic, which means you have to understand what it says, my man. You have to understand what it says. You learning the same Daf Gemara for three and a half years, thinking you're Kodesh Kodeshim, you're just an idiot. Why? Because you learn one page for three years. There's still 2,665 more pages. So 
this is the Gemara. Most important thing is to learn the Pshat. Arch scroll gives you the Pshat. First, finish the Shas. Finish the entire Gemara. Basic. Once, twice. Say the Shem more. After you're comfortable with it, then you can start learning it in different languages, original language, this language, that language, whatever. But first learn what it says. You can't tell me I've been learning for 25 years and I still don't know the difference between white and blue. So all these people that go against art scroll, they're going against the Torah. They're going against the Chachamim. Why? Because this is just to learn the basic Pshat. And if you have a wrong translation of the Pshat, of the basic meaning, Everything else you're going to build on top of it, as we said yesterday, is rotten, it's good, it's, it's wrong. Because if the foundation is rotten, eventually the building you build on top of it will collapse. So here, what's the result? What's the outcome? What does Rabbi Ephraim, what does Rabbi Ephraim say about such people? Where does it all stem from? He says this all stems from the people that are making fun of anybody learning Torah, what does it stem from? It stems from two things. One, gava, pride. They think they're better than everybody else. Apparently, they haven't read this Mishnah in Pirkei Avot that says you can't judge people uh, in such a way and make fun of them regardless of their Tamit Chacham, Tamit Katan, Goy. doesn't matter. You're not allowed to make fun of people. Two, no Yerat Shamayim. The Yerat Shamayim, they missed. And he says, why? So how come they don't know this Gemara? They learn Gemara, they repeat Purim, they go to Yeshiva, 25 years, this, that. Why? He says in the book, he says in the book, he says because they're so busy making fun of other people and so busy focusing on the one page for the entire three months, four months, five months, they only learn one page, two pages, three pages, three months, that they never actually got to the 63rd page of Masechet Shabbat. They never read the actual Gemara because they're still busy on the first page. So from your pilpulim, you end up doing bilbulim. From the pilpul, you ended up confused. Ah, the guy hates me for no reason. See, not chinam, misken. Misken, misken, misken. There's a lot of miskenim. People just destroy their world. So, so that's the thing. The problem is that people are, are mamash putting their ulama ba at risk every day for no reason. No reason. Just learn. Do what you got to do. You don't agree with somebody else. You don't agree with somebody else. You don't have to agree with everybody in the world. But to stop making fun of people in public, why? Why? Why making fun of people in public? Put their names out there. Destroy them. Destroy personalities. Defame them. Embarrass them. Why? For what? For what? What are you gaining out of it? What, 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 what benefit do you get out of it? What? Everybody tells you, ha, 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 with you? Don't you know, don't you know there's a rule in the Torah, Malbim Pnei Chavero Berabim, En Lo Chelek Lo Dama Ba? So the Gemara asks, why is it that someone that embarrasses another person in public has no share of the world to come? So the Gemara answers, says because he committed murder. What does Malbim Pnei Chavero mean? He makes his, his face white. Why all the, all the, from embarrassment, all the blood rushed out of his face and if he didn't have cheeks, all of the blood would split into the, he would die. All the blood from his entire body would come out of his face. So you have to thank God to Hashem gave him cheeks. You just committed murder, 100%. He says, yeah, okay, fine, it's no problem. But Rav Nisimi again, Zechet Tzadik Vivacha, says, okay, fine, no problem. But what happens here is that for murder, somebody murdered, it's, it's punishment, death penalty, but he still has share of the world to come. You're saying that someone that's a malbin pnei chaviro that embarrasses another person in public has no share of the world to come, but it's like murder. So how is it that murder itself still has olam haba and like murder has no olam haba? It's a worse punishment. So all Chaim HaKadosh says, the one that murdered, the next day, he realizes he just killed somebody. He realizes it's not good. He has a conscience. He's still human. He's not, an, he's not a tiger or, or a lion. If he's a normal person, he's not completely crazy. There's some part of it that feels bad. If he gets caught, even more. Gets uh, punished, goes to jail, something happens. If he kills somebody in this country, he goes to jail for 5, 10 years. If he steals a million dollars, 30 years minimum. Stupidest country in the world, but that's the law. He steals money, he goes to jail pretty much for the rest of his life. He kills five, six people, goes to jail for 10 years. If he's got a good lawyer, five years. 
in yeah, Florida, they'll work. execute you on it. In Texas, they'll let you kill. There's only a couple of uh, states in the country that have a little bit state. of common sense. So anyway, but the Torah asks here, why is it the guy that murdered has Olam Abba, punished, but has Olam Abba, the guy that did something like a murder, embarrassed somebody in public, no Olam Abba. It's like a murder, should be less. If anything, should be less. So Chaim HaKadosh says, the guy that murdered, he feels bad a little bit. He suffers a little bit because he knows at the end of the day he murdered somebody. The guy that did Lashon Ara, went against the rabbi in public, went against the regular person in public, started embarrassing his waiter in public, embarrassed his wife in front of the kids, embarrassed the student, things, hey, whatever he did. He does, not only he doesn't feel bad, he feels he's right. He did a mitzvah. He did a mitzvah like this ten bell that made the recording against me recently. What happens? What does he do? I'm comfortable saying it simply because I know no one's going to ever find him. He's doing it for Am Yisrael. What is he doing? He's doing it for Am Yisrael to fight the sheker, to fight the lies. So he publicizes my name and tells everybody I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm this and I'm that and I never did this I never did that. Mamash murders me in public. What happened? Did, did I, did, what happened? What are you doing? What are you doing? He feels he's right. He feels he's not only right, he's doing chesed. He's doing mitzvah. He's doing something good. That's why Hashem Barach says, such a person, if he doesn't do tshuva, Bezat Hashem does tshuva. Such a person, en lo chelik lo Why? Because he's never going to suffer for it. He's never going to say, I'm sorry for it. Even in Elul. Elul, 40 days of tshuva. Yom Kippur, chatanu avinu pashanu. Nothing. He's never going to be 40 years, 50 years, 70 years on earth. Every year, say, say, I'm sorry. Say, I'm sorry. What is it? What am I saying sorry for? For what? What should I be sorry for? I did a mitzvah, the Kiddush Hashem. I embarrassed your own Reuven in public. Now he knows better. I embarrassed Arch Call in public. I embarrassed all the Chachamim, Rav David Feinstein, Rav Kanievsky, Rav Steinemann. I went against all of them. I was Moshe Rabbeinu of the generation. I did Kiddush Hashem. He's never get, not only he doesn't feel bad, he's proud of what he did. He's proud of what he did. Ben Azai Omer, don't be mean to people. It starts with small sin. It starts by being mean to the guy that just showed up to the yeshiva for the first time. It starts by being mean to the average guy. Jew, non-Jew, rich, Poor, male, female. Don't be mean. Don't be mean. It's the basic level. He's not talking about chasidut. You have to be this, you have to be that. It was basic human being. Don't be mean to anyone. You have no toilet. There's nothing resourceful or productive out of it. It's only going to bring you bad. It's only going to bring you suffering. It's only going to put your ulama ba in jeopardy. Why? And never be such a person that makes fun of other things and get to a point where eventually you think you're running the show. Why? Because everyone else will get their time to shine. Everyone else will get their time to shine. 